yeah, yeah exactly yeah. yay well thank you so much for being here how are you doing i'm doing awesome nice. glad to be here and you know yes. glad that you reached out to me so i'm always open to doing collaborations Yes, I appreciate your openness and stepping more into the podcasting space and the interviewing space. And yeah, um, how did like the full moon energy treat you? Do you tune into Ooh, that much? It's so funny you should ask that because my roommate and I were just talking about that. Mm -hmm. Like having crazy dreams or just, you know, feeling tired or sluggish, you know, all mm -hmm. of that. I've, I've experienced both ends of that. So yeah, I feel like. nice. what about you? Yes. Um, yeah kind of everything like a whole total experience but even just on a level of looking at it and thinking how beautiful it is and i'm at the beach right now so i had this really beautiful experience of watching the sunset and then having the full moon be there just Ooh. sinking into such gratitude to just like behold such beauty you know what i mean kind yeah. of like getting outside of my individual self and what's going in song and on inside and in my life yes. just zooming out enough to be like oh my gosh this is all so much bigger than me and so freaking exactly. beautiful so that was like a moment i will probably remember forever oh yeah absolutely yeah but yeah thank you so much for being here um we are in a zoom call i figure this will take about an hour or so okay. um i can have you introduce yourself and then we can just drop into some questions that i have and um continue to chat as it flows organically this okay. isn't live right now but i am recording it if you are okay with that and the intention is to later share this with my audience or like both of our audiences to like okay. fire educate and connect whoever yeah, <laughs> is resonating with the message yeah sounds good Yay! So again, thank you so much for being here. I'm going to open up the floor and let you introduce yourself. Absolutely. So I am Regis Cowan. I am the host of Spiritual Shit You Need to Know podcast. I am a spiritual life coach, um, and I really focus on helping women attract their desires by, you know, manifesting, using the law of attraction, and really working on your thoughts and your mindset. Um, because that's where it all starts, you know, in order to attract or bring things into your life, you got to start with your mindset. Mm -hmm. So that's one of my biggest um, focuses that I like to work on. Mm -hmm. And then my other thing that I work on a lot is teaching people how their life crisis is a wake up call. Mm -hmm. um, because I went through my own spiritual awakening, and it just kind of started to unfold from there. And a lot of mm -hmm. people don't realize that that's what's happening. So I kind of exactly. guide them through that as well. Very cool. Yes. Thank you so much for being here. And I'm curious, like, how did you come to be on this path, both like uh, using these techniques that you share with your clients for yourself, but then maybe a shift where you are like, oh, my gosh, this could be a business. I could be helping other people from what I've been through. Yeah. So it started back probably about 10 or 12 years ago now. Like I said, when I was going through my own personal wake up call, midlife crisis or quarter life crisis, they call it. Mm -hmm. um, I call it my millennial life crisis because I'm yeah. still considered a millennial. Um, so, you know, just kind of going through the motions of life, um, you know, wondering why things were happening to me. I was, you know, I got fired from my job. My relationship was failing and mm -hmm. living check to check and trying to figure out like, well, where do I fit in? What's my purpose? You know, trying to follow that traditional path of, you know, you graduate high school, you go to college, you get a good job. And those things just weren't happening for me, but they were happening for everyone else around me. Mm -hmm. um, so while all that was going on, my grandmother, who I was really close to, passed away. And so that just kind of triggered something in me, even though I've kind of always been attracted to spirituality and things, I didn't really dive into it until like that just kind of triggered something. Mm. And, you know, I wanted to know like, well, what is this life all about? And why are we here? What's really our purpose? And can we connect with loved ones, you know, after they leave this earth? So all of that's going on. And, you know, that kind of just catapulted me into the realm of spirituality. Um, mm -hmm. So I started, you know, reading books um, about, you know, self-help and life after death. And um, Oprah was one of my biggest um, influencers because at the time she had her Live Your Best Life tour. And so she mm -hmm. had all these spiritual people, you know, coming on her show. And it was just yeah. like, all, we were having all these aha moments. You know, they coined mm -hmm. that term back then, aha. 
Um, so I was having all these awakening moments mm -hmm. and I started applying some of this stuff to my life and, you know, things started to shift and start to change. And I realized that, you know, spirit universe was guiding me down a different path, but I was very resistant to, you know, accept it. And so the more I resisted, the worse things got. So when I finally kind of let go and got in flow, then, you know, things start to shift and get better. And so it's been a journey of continuing to study and learn and open up. And that's kind of led me to be like, you know what, I need to teach other people this because I started seeing other people's lives, you know, friends, family members whose lives were just like, you know, going downhill. And they were wondering like, well, why is this happening to me? And I, I'm a good person. And, you know, not thinking that they're the problem. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to share that with other people. Like, look, girls, time to get your shit together. <laughs> It's not them. It's not the world. It's you. Right. So and that can be it. that can be so difficult in my own experience. The like, wait, it's me? No, but like right. I, I want to blame I, I want to blame and project like other people, which at this point I truly don't. I want to dare to look at my own stuff. I can just so relate with how that can be difficult from the ego sense. And I know like some people in the spiritual or like self-help community, they have a rather like negative connotation of the ego completely because that can yes. be something that gets in the way of really looking at your own stuff and then like taking responsibility. But I myself, like, I don't want to make my ego an enemy. I want it to be fully integrated. I want right. it to really show up and do what it's been evolved for like how long to do, but exactly. at the same time, knowing that I am more than my ego. I am more than my thoughts. Right. I am more than these limits. So um, yeah, if you would just want to talk about your philosophy or your own experience with the ego dance and how you look at your Ooh. own stuff and how you like <laughs> inform your clients to look at their stuff. Like what's the best way to like get that out of the way to do the work without oh. shaming it, if that makes sense. Let's see, because uh, clearly the ego pops up every day, all day. You know, it's it's constantly one of those battles that you have to kind of play around with. Um, I think one of the biggest things that I've learned to do is, well, journaling is one. Mm. Um, like I like to do like a brain dump, you know, okay, mm -hmm. is this me or is this my ego or is this my spirit? Like which one is talking to me? It's sometimes, you know, getting stuck in your head is good to just do a brain dump. And then I'll come back later and look at it. And I'm like, yo, this shit doesn't make any sense. Okay, <laughs> clearly, I was just having a moment. That was my ego. That wasn't, you know, my soul speaking to me because yeah. when I look at it later, it just doesn't resonate. Yeah. Um, so that's one way I like to. And then obviously like meditating, getting quiet. Um, everybody's version of meditation is different. For me, it's just really taking some quiet time, mm -hmm. you know, to kind of let your brain and your thoughts just kind of settle so that you can sift through, you know, what's ego um, and what's not. And, mm -hmm. and one of the other ways that I, you know, for me personally, that I realize if it's ego or if it's spirit is, you know, does it feel grounding? If it's a thought or an experience or something that feels grounding, like mm -hmm. I can kind of feel it in my gut and it feels good, then I know that spirit, that's okay. If it's ego, it's kind of like, you're getting all in your head. You know, you've got all these thoughts running, it's going back and forth. It may create some um, anxiousness, anxiety. And so that's when I know, okay, wait, I need to kind of ground this energy first because exactly. this is the ego getting in the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I really like what you said about a brain dump. Like brain dumping yes. is part of, like I have a, a weekly process that I do to really stay like focused and clear and like not get overwhelmed while still mm -hmm. staying highly productive or like as productive as I'm wanting to be and brain dumping is one of those steps I can't imagine not doing that just to like yeah. get it out of my head onto paper and then yeah provide that perspective to then see does this stick is this grounded where is this coming from does right. this get to move on with me in my journey but give it give it its little bit and That's then move it. on from there give yeah it space yeah, it's there for a reason space. sift through it yeah. And um, I'm, I'm also curious as to your uh, like educational or career professional background before getting into this niche. Yeah. So I go back to like when I was seven, eight years old, I've always wanted to be a teacher. So mm -hmm. that was my first career path that I thought I was going to take, you know, at such a young age. And so I've always liked being the teacher or providing information or resources to people. Um, so that was kind of one thing that I always wanted to do. And then as I got a little older, helping people teaching turned into more of like healthcare. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Um, So I wanted to go to school to be a doctor or something in healthcare because I knew I would be helping people in some way. Mm -hmm. Um, So originally I went to school, thought I was going to go into pre-med to be a doctor and, you know, that didn't quite pan out, but I still had this, I want to help people thing in me. Mm -hmm. Um, So my professional background is in uh, healthcare as a radiologist. So I was an x-ray tech for about seven years before I quit my job this past December. Mm -hmm. Um, So I've always had that in me of wanting to help people, wanting to teach. And so even though I was in the healthcare field and I was doing, you know, x-ray per se, that kind of bled into me helping coworkers and helping them on their spiritual path. And, you know, when things came up at work and people felt stuck, then Mm -hmm. I started to teach them ways that they could, you know, quiet their mind and ground into their energy and, you know, feel into what they're meant to do in that particular moment. And so then that just kind of turned into me starting my own business and, you know, sharing this with the world. So even though I'm not in the healthcare field per se anymore, um, as an x-ray tech, I do still have, you know, those same practices follow you and go wherever you go, no matter what career you're in. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And I resonate with that so much, this concept of knowing that you're meant to help people, knowing that you're meant to be a healer in some capacity. I too was going down the pre-med track back in college and it felt like, okay, I'm trying here, but at the same time, this doesn't feel right. This doesn't feel aligned, at least for now. And then to give myself permission to realign or pivot as they say but still own like this is what you're here to do to inspire people to heal people to help people but yeah just um yeah that's so it's so inspiring and freeing to be like I can still be in my purpose even if it doesn't look like what my ego or mind is telling me like this is exactly how it needs to look exactly yeah and that's the hard part sometimes accepting that because we don't know exactly or we want to know exactly how it's all going to happen what's the plan you know is there a specific niche or job or career that I'm supposed to be doing like does it fit into a box and yep. sometimes it doesn't. And you have yeah. to be okay with that. Sometimes it doesn't. And it is so okay if it doesn't. For me, it's the sense of like, oh, but during small talk, you know, especially if the work is deep, during small talk, like, what do I say? Or like, what am yeah. I supposed to say? And all <laughs> of that, you know. Too. Yeah. So it's like, call it life coach. That's like the door. And then once people are through the yes. door, it's like, yo, like, where do you There's really want to go it. with this? Yeah. Exactly. And I'm also curious, like how the name of your business came to you or like what that was like shifting it into for the sake of boxes and communicating Mm -hmm. it with other people, the business side of it. Like what was your journey like with that, with your background in healthcare? Um, So my business name is actually The Holistic Sojourner. Mm -hmm. Um, And I came up with that because it was just kind of like a download that came to me one day. Um, Anything that's holistic, you know, it just kind of summarized everything that I like. Crystals, oils, tarot cards, um, you know, eating healthy, all this this health and well-being lifestyle. Holistic was a word that I was really attracted to. Um, And then Sojourner came from Sojourner Truth Mm -hmm. um, because I had a psychic reading a few years back and the... um, person told me that Sojourner Truth was one of my spirit guides, you know, that I'm here to speak the truth and to share it with others and to, um, you know, help people stand up for themselves. And so, you know, that just kind of downloaded into my head one day. I'm like, oh, holistic Sojourner, because that's kind of what I am. I'm a Sojourner of health and well-being. Um, so that's how I came up with that. And then my podcast name, which is Spiritual Shit You Need to Know, Yes. that kind of evolved. <laughs> um, so one of my friends, you know, People in my circle were like, well, what is all this stuff you're into? Crystals and tarot and, you know, all this stuff. And Mm -hmm. so one of my friends said to me, you're into a lot of spiritual shit. I was like, yes, that's it. Exactly. That's (laughs) That sums it up for like common people who have no clue what new age stuff is. That's spiritual shit. So you're into all that. I'm like, yeah, exactly. So Uh that's how the podcast name came very cool i love that and i love that you're speaking with um like the language that you would naturally speak with to your friends you know what i mean because i feel like sometimes i get like i would say oh that's spiritual shit you need to know but then i'm like oh am i allowed to cuss like these like little (laughs) like am i allowed to be that real and authentic with the message that i'm bringing and it's like of course there are human 
courtesy types of things to do and not do but outside of that I think there is so much room to really like no call it what it is say what it is and that's what people are like needing and wanting the most you know what I mean yeah and I'd like to think of that as you know when I'm on my podcast that that's who I'm talking to I'm talking to my friends you know they want to know like in layman terms like Mm -hmm. what is all this spiritual shit what does this mean and so I'm Mm -hmm. like okay girl I gotta break it down for you in layman's terms so that you understand you know two girlfriends having a conversation exactly and I would love to hear more about your journey with stepping into more of a podcaster role to further empower the teacher and educator in yourself like why that platform (laughs) amongst the so many different ones out there these days um well when I started this journey I had a coach um Mona Lisa and she specifically works with introverted women who want to be coaches and so when I saw her ad one day you know I was like okay her message was like it just hit me to my core I'm an introvert predominantly people may think I'm an extrovert but I'm really not um and so I want to go into this coaching space and I want to teach people but I don't feel like I'm that person that you know wants to be on video all the time or you know it's just kind of out in the open all the time because it's draining it's super draining Mm -hmm. to my energy Mm -hmm. um and she had her own podcast and so we were talking about you know how podcasting can be a way for you to share your message Mm -hmm. so I just kind of you know played with the idea a little bit it didn't really resonate at first um and so then you know we started talking about writing a newsletter every week or you know talking to your audience so I got to the point to where like writing a newsletter every week became kind of tiresome it started to drain my energy and I was like yo I could just say this and get it all out you know it doesn't have to be perfect it can just be me talking and so then I got the download start a podcast does <laughs> you like to talk you broadcast to your ramblings and music yes. <laughs> people can relate to you more yeah. you know and I felt like I found my voice more in podcasting because I could get the message across you know directly mm-hmm. and people could kind of feel my energy and you know hear my words hear my tone of voice and really relate to that versus writing, you know, I do think you can get a sense of that in writing, but it's not the same as talking because mm-hmm. you get, you know, the person's energy comes across. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I got that. And I was like, you know, let me start a podcast. And it's been a journey yeah. um, because when I first started, it was writing out my script, oh, reading it. Yeah. <laughs> and I went back and it sounded like reading a script. <laughs> so I was like, okay, this is not working because even I don't feel like this resonates so I was like okay let me just you know keep it simple have my little Mm -hmm. bullet point to refer back to and then just talk like you're having a conversation because I noticed that those were the podcasters who I could relate to who I felt Mm -hmm. like were just talking I feel like they were reading a script Mm -hmm. so it's it's been an evolving journey but I tell most people and especially coaches who want to start a podcast like this is a great way for you to find your voice Mm -hmm. and for your audience to kind of connect in with you so that's why I love it yeah thank you for sharing and um how long have you been podcasting now um so it's what three years now yeah going on three years I started it back in 2018 so ah congratulations thank you so much yeah so you were saying you worked with a coach for uh into or introverted people who wanted to be coaches who wanted to step into that role now and then how is it that you describe who you help in a specific way um so she and I actually have similar audiences um so I specifically like to work with women okay Um, most of them that resonate with me are same thing they feel like they're intuitive empathic Mm -hmm. um introverted Um, They may be coaches and they want to share their message with the world, but they don't quite know, you know, how to get it out there because obviously most of the world is projected that we're in, you know, an extroverted world. Mm -hmm. Um, So really helping them find their own personal voice, whether it be, you know, for their own personal life, for their business, um, whatever it may be to kind of help them hone in on their personal message and, you know, to project that to the world. And that Mm -hmm. starts with, you know, building that confidence muscle and attracting things that you want in your life so that you feel good and that you want to share that with the world. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of like specifically what I work with. Okay, very cool. And yeah. do you have do you have multiple things you offer? Is it more so like the one, like come work with me through these multiple sessions, like juicy program? 
Um, yeah, it's really just kind of an all in one thing. It's really kind of tailored to what the person needs specifically. Mm -hmm. um, I know recently I just started teaching others how to podcast. So oh, that's wow. like a separate thing. Like I have if coaches who already have a brand and they're a coach, if they want to start a podcast, um, then they can work with me one on one and we'll kind of yeah. get everything up and running and, you know, tailor your message. Um, so that's one area. And then the other like life coaching, spiritual purpose is really kind of like where you are at that moment, what you need to work on. So, you know, okay. is it attracting more money in your life or do you, are you having a bad relationship? Or if you're like me, the life crisis that you feel like everything's just kind of going wrong. I don't know where to start, you know, mm -hmm. kind of start with you and your thoughts and what you're attracting and why. Um, so those are just kind of the two juicy things that I'm working on right now yeah. that I'd love to share super juicy yes thank you for sharing I've so enjoyed the podcasting space in my like very yeah. limited experience of it so far and I appreciate yeah your like openness and your desire to like not only step into that space yourself and inspire people but more intentionally open yourself up to educating people that want to learn more about it yes absolutely mm -hmm. So if you yeah. have any questions, you can definitely, oh, you know, let you. me know and yeah. I can share all the knowledge with you. Yes. And um, I'm also curious, if anything, how has your business and like the lives of your clients shifted for better or worse with everything going on this past year? Mm -hmm. um, honestly, sometimes people are shocked when I say this, but, you know, I was kind of excited when the pandemic hit because I'm like Intr introverts you know. unite. <laughs> we're like, introverts were like we don't gotta go anywhere. <laughs> same. So same. I'm gonna be working remotely. Perfect. That's a dream. I get to stay at home. Perfect. That's a dream. I don't have to yeah. be around people all the time. Perfect. You know, I was excited about that. You know, and other coaches that I have worked with or who I mastermind with, like for us, this was just like okay, this is our time. This is when we show up. Yes. Because everybody's going to be like this on Zoom. You know, these are things that we're already doing, but the masses are not connected into this. Like, this is what we've been doing for a while. We've been waiting for that moment where we can show up like this, you know, mm -hmm. podcasting, like people are jumping on podcasting or learning what they are and listening to them. Um, you know, the self-help world has exploded. So for me personally, it's just been like the next natural step. Mm -hmm. um, and then as far as like clients and people who I've worked with, I've noticed a huge shift as well with them. I think, you know, for one, the pandemic has made people really kind of deal with their shit. You know, if you've kind of pushed it back, it's right here in your face now and you have to deal with it. Mm -hmm. But it's also opened them up to just a lot of different avenues and things that are here to help us and to serve mm -hmm. us. So I'm glad that people are opening up to change and to, you know, being better for themselves. So I've seen mm -hmm. some uh, dramatic shifts. I use my sister who I need to get on my podcast here eventually. Mm -hmm. um, I talk to her all the time about law of attraction and Abraham Hicks. And so she finally like downloaded this audio book and she's been listening to it. And I mean, the shifts that happened for her, like I'm slick jealous of her. I'm like, how is this working that good for you? Like, so one of her things is getting checks in the mail. She yeah. gets a check in the mail like every week. And she's hey. like, how does this keep happening? So, <laughs> like, wait a minute, where's my check? Because I'm the one that taught you this. Right. Um, so it's been really good for her. She's been able to shift her energy and, you know, just attract things that she wants. And they just kind of, you know, come out of nowhere, literally. So, yeah. you know, that's one personal testimony that I can definitely say, you know, she has, has shifted and benefited from this. So. It's, it's been good. Yeah, oh, I totally relate to so much of that. When the pandemic hit, I was like, I'm literally doing everything I already did. Like I'm working exactly. online. Like I want to, yeah, I'm just going to continue doing everything <laughs> I was already doing. I think I did drop into meditation like more than I ever have. Oh, yeah. So I was able to just like mm -hmm. sit and be. Yes. Uh, but yeah, you're right, though, it's like hard for some people to understand. And I even felt guilty really owning like, this was mm. not the worst year ever for me, like exactly. so much of this, you know what I mean? But that's part of the mindset shifting. It's like, an opportunity to see anything and everything as like, how can this work for me? How can I yes. become better? from this like I'm not a victim here that that oh yeah that's big to really be living from you know and I think you you also brought up an interesting point in the sense of like 
hey, I gave you this information and now you're getting checks in the mail every week or you're yes. getting like whatever magic can and does happen from the magic that is you or I or anyone sharing what they know that has helped yes. them. And I'm curious, like, how do you balance the sense of mm, reciprocity or balance when you know you have all of these gems to share? The sense mm -hmm. of like, okay, I want to share, but I also want to make sure I'm being properly compensated for what I'm sharing, you know? Um, honestly, I think that's more of, like you said, it's more of like an internal, um, work that we have to do the inner work. Mm. Whereas I think that starts with knowing that you're worthy, um, and being able to stand in that and to claim it, I think mm. will always be rewarded. Sometimes we're not rewarded the way we think we should be rewarded, whether it be monetary or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but working on that mindset and that inner work, knowing that you're worthy, that you're always going to get what's meant for you. Mm -hmm. um, and that it will be, you know, reciprocated to you. So really just kind of keeping that in my mind and that, you know, why I'm doing this work is bigger than me or bigger than just the money. Mm -hmm. um, and knowing that I'll always be compensated and I always am in some form or fashion. So mm -hmm. to really hone in on that and to believe it and know it and feel it, you know, in yeah. your soul yeah, yeah. is something that I have to continue to work on daily. Um, yeah. And so that's really been the biggest thing for me. That's yeah. how I kind of keep that balance. It's reminding me of how we can relate to our life's purpose. It's like, hey, it's going to unfold by design exactly, exactly the way it's meant to, as it, the same as you will be reciprocated exactly how it's meant to, and it won't mm -hmm. miss you. But the details right. might not, like, probably. The way won't. you think it's supposed the to. The way you think it's supposed to happen. Yeah. So just like suspend that for a bit. <laughs> Keep and that going. would be hard. I mean, because I definitely have it, you know, ego's there, goes back and forth. And it's like, well, wait a minute, am I doing this? Or do I have anything to show for? Am I getting paid? <laughs> yeah. And then I have to be like, okay, we just stop. Just, you know, that this is how things are. You know, all the universal laws, you know, you know, you know this. I tell people that I'm, I'm no different. I have to have, you know, this inner work that I have to focus on too. So mm -hmm. I'm no exception to the rule. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. And then, yeah, you were mentioning before how inspired you were by Oprah and like seeing your life through the lens of these aha moments. I'm curious, yeah. like, who are your biggest teachers and inspirations right now? Oh, OK. So I have two coaches, their mm. husband and wife, who Aww. are um, really big, big on um, Ryan and Chris Yakomi. Mm. Um, they each have their own podcast. Um, Ryan is actually, who's the husband, he's like one of the persons who kind of drew me in first because he's mm -hmm. all about um, money. His podcast is called the Soul Wealth Podcast. Okay. So it does focus on like money and money mindset and just kind of really tapping into your purpose, mm -hmm. you know, and what really living in abundance is and what that's like versus, you know, the monetary aspect of it. Yeah. So he kind of drew me in and then one of his biggest things he likes to talk about is like conspiracy theories and things like that. So I'm like, oh, you drew me in. I'm yeah. there. <laughs> Let's lift that veil. Yeah. Uh -huh. So <laughs> he kind of just drew me in. And then, you know, I learned about him and his wife and the work they were doing. So I've worked with them. Um, so they're huge influencers. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, like I said, Oprah, um, Gabrielle Bernstein, mm. uh, Danielle Laporte was huge because um, one of my coaches, that was one of the things she taught us was about the desire map. So once I read mm. the desire map, another aha moment, like, oh yeah, this is how we're meant to create. Like mm. we're meant to create and attract things based off of how we want to feel. Yeah. Because, you know, it's the feeling we're chasing. It's not really the item. It's mm -hmm. how we want to feel when we get the item, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so that was huge for me. Let's see. Um, Iyanla Van Zant, because she, you know, has her own TV show. She's, you know, one of Oprah's friends. She was really probably the person that, after watching her show, I was like, I want to do that with my life. You mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. coaching people and having those breakthrough moments, like, and how she just, like, you know, just straightforward, like she doesn't hold anything back to really push people, you know, to the next level. Yeah. Like she was, that, that played a major part in me be like, okay, this is what I want to do with my life. Everything she's doing, that's what I want to do. Yeah. Um, so those are the few of the people who I'm just like, okay, yeah, that resonates with me. Exactly. Like seeing the blueprint, if you will, and then being like, okay, now I can do this in my own unique way, but this yes. is a blueprint. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I got, <laughs> I got to research all of this. <laughs> I know these people, right? Boy. Yeah, like, no, I'm inspired. Um, 
yeah and i'm i'm also curious like what have been your biggest struggles in this niche um really trying to really saying that i have a niche has been mm. a, a hard um thing for me because mm -hmm. there are just so many things that i do like that i'm interested in and so mm -hmm. when people tell me to kind of summarize what i do or what mm -hmm. i focus on it's kind of hard because it's really it is a holistic um environment that i'm in you know so i i do do things with crystals and tarot and essential mm -hmm. oils which are huge yes. um for me i love essential oils and so yes. um eating plant-based foods and cooking so there's there's a lot to it um I will say that my main niche is helping people with their life purpose. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I've had people come to me from all walks of life. So I think that's probably been the hardest thing is trying to find that specific niche. Yeah. Um, just from working with like coaches and stuff, you know, that's the thing they say, like, what's your specific niche? And so mm -hmm. it's been kind of hard to tailor that. Yeah. But I mostly right now I'm working on just kind of focusing on the podcast. So that's my main thing right now. Gotcha. Um, and that's kind of been a little hard for me because I have been all over the place and I do like to, you know, dibble and dabble in a lot of different things. Totally. Um, so kind of really trying to make myself home yeah. a little bit more on that one thing and then mm -hmm. kind of let that branch off into other things. So that's kind of been my biggest struggle. Totally. And I, I can relate with that, the niching struggle when it's a holistic paradigm. Yeah. And are you, are you saying it's a struggle more like internally or existentially yeah. or more internally. of a struggle okay yeah yeah, yeah. i yeah, i completely yeah. get that then <laughs> yeah so i'm curious i understand like when we're learning how to be coaches the script of like find your niche and then niche down like as yeah. far as you can which is yeah <laughs> like so it's like wait what um but has that come across as a struggle with clients because i felt like i very clearly understood yeah. like yo this is a holistic thing like i already have yeah. that way of thinking about it so do you do you think like how important do you think this get into the niche get into the box even is when it comes to like clients and the people called to work with you knowing what you are yeah yeah, yeah um I absolutely think it's a struggle and I do think it is important um mm -hmm. that's why I do have a coach who's kind of helping me with that mm -hmm. because I have not had this like explosion of clients you know mm -hmm. like I want or this program that you know is like my one thing that I just want to send out to people mm -hmm. um I feel like it has been a little bit of struggle trying to take my message and put it out so that other people really get it and understand it so that it's like you know that instant connect um so that part has been a little bit of a struggle because you know tapping into that flow it's like i am doing i know i'm doing what i'm supposed to be doing and i am in flow but i am like waiting for that like the stream is you know the faucet is all the way turned on this is it this is where you need to focus i don't feel like i am specifically there yet so mm -hmm. that's something that i'm working on mm -hmm. um because i do see that i do have that vision of like something's going to, you know, pop off and just skyrocket and it's going to be amazing and beautiful and crazy. But, you know, kind of finding where you fit in and what that is, I definitely still, still going yeah. through that. But I do think it's, you know, important so that people just kind of get the message of whatever it is you're trying to project to the world. Yeah, exactly. And like, I can so relate to that. I remember being in a space of like, no, I couldn't possibly knit, like refusing to even yeah. try. But now I'm in a place where it is fun. It feels like a game. It's like, how can I do this dance or like yes. do this puzzle? And I forget where I heard it, but this analogy of like the niche is this is just the door that people can walk through. And then once yes. they're through the door, then it's like, here's it opens up. Yeah. Then I was like, okay, because I I'm inspired by that. I understand what's happening now. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, cu I'm curious as to how essential oils came to be like so titillating for you. Oh, you know, I, I think I've just kind of always been in the aromatherapy realm because yeah. the thing with any type of smell or scent is, you know, it, it invokes some type of emotion in you. Mm -hmm. So for instance, like my favorite holiday is Christmas. I yeah. mean, I could probably celebrate Christmas all year <laughs> long. And my friends hate it because they're like, are you listening to Christmas music? It's like June. I'm like, yeah, I want really? to be in a good mood. So I just smell some Christmas music, you know? <laughs> or if we have a Christmas candle, I'll light it. And they're like, why does it smell like Christmas in here? And I'm like, because it just invokes this warm, comforting, yeah. you know, feeling that I love. 
So that kind of translated into, you know, aromatherapy, you know, certain smells invoke mm -hmm. certain emotions. Mm -hmm. And so when I learned about that, it actually started with, um, I joined a doTERRA group um, okay. and they were all about, you know, holistic tools and things mm -hmm. like that. And so I, that's where I learned about um, crystals and tarot cards and, you know, just essential oils in general and how they can help open your chakras. Um, I started there and then essential oils kind of started just being a part of my life every day because I learned that they had health benefits, um, you know, they can help cleanse your aura. There's so many ways that you can use them. Mm -hmm. And so they started to become a part of my, my daily routine. And so then I wanted to share them with other people so that they could get those um, emotional benefits as well. So mm -hmm. that's, you know, just like a juice part that I like to incorporate into my life daily, you know, taking a bath and adding a couple drops of essential oils can just shift your mindset and your energy. Yes. Um, so I'm just like all about oils and, you know, the sense of smell because it just, it can just change your mood at any moment. It can so much. And have you heard that like smell is super closely related to like memory and stuff yes. like that? But I, I wasn't even thinking how related to emotion it is mm -hmm. then too. You know what I mean? To be like, oh, I'm Absolutely. in this state now. That's, that's really cool to think about. Um, what are your favorite essential oil scents? Ooh, so my, well, lately I love Ylang Ylang. Um, oh, yeah. Love that yes, one. Yes. So that one's like related to the inner child and it also mm. is connected to your heart. So I, I love that one. Um, geranium, because this mm. is another one that's really feminine. It's kind of the same thing, inner child. And um, I always love lavender. Lavender is like my go to. Yeah. Um, eucalyptus lemongrass is actually one of my favorites mm. so i kind of get mixed reviews about it some people love it some people hate it um okay. but lemongrass is really like a cleansing oil mm -hmm. um, so i'll make like my own sage spray with lemongrass and spray my room you know if you don't mm. want to burn sage you can make a spray that's a, a sage spray with lemongrass um and so it's just those are a few that i just you know gravitate or i have to have all the time mm -hmm. and they just boost my mood i love it yes i love it too yeah i was wondering how much you got into making your own products or like making your own blends with the oils and stuff like that um so i do occasionally um mm -hmm. i've kind of cut back on that just because now you can kind of order the blends gotcha. that are already kind of pre-made but you know i have um an essential oil book that kind of lists a lot of different recipes and things like that so i'll try some of those nice. um yeah or you know for health benefits like if you have an insect bite or something there's you know an oil for that there's an oil for everything and so i have my little go-to book um it also focuses on emotions so if you're feeling this way use this oil mm -hmm. um, so i have my little reference that i'll go to um, I don't sell blends or anything like that just because it's a lot of work to, you know, to do that. Obviously. Yeah, like it's and just a whole other it's game. It's a whole other world, right? Playing. Yeah. Yeah. And Trying so to me, niche over more, here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm like, that's a whole other world. I'm trying to niche over here and focus on what my main message is. Exactly. Well, it's just kind of an extra part that I like yeah. to incorporate. So, yeah. Totally. Yeah. And um, I'm curious also with the podcasting and like really resonating with that space, how much are you focused on the video component compared to or like with the audio component, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So that's something that I am somewhat working through or working on. Okay. Um, I've had I've heard mixed reviews from other coaches, other podcasters. You know, there are podcasters who will record like this video every podcast they do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for me, I feel like the reason I got into podcasting is because I don't want to be on video. You know? <laughs> yep, so yep, 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 yep. there is a delicate balance there. You know, if podcasting is a part of your brand, you are going to have to be visual at some point so people can put the face with the voice. Um, but the biggest thing that I like to remind people is that, yeah, you did get into podcasting because of the audio. Yeah. So don't focus so much on the video, you know, focus more on the audio and then mm -hmm. kind of add in a little bit of video here and there. Yeah. So that's what I try to remind myself. That way it's not so overwhelming, you know, just mm -hmm. because you have a podcast doesn't mean you need to be on YouTube. Some exactly. people put their podcast on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I've heard from other podcasting coaches. They're like, well, podcasting doesn't really go with YouTube, you know, as far as the SEO and analytics, it's not going to translate well because podcasting is meant to be audio. It's not meant to be video. Exactly. So you just kind of have to play around and figure out what works for you. But definitely 
Um, I do a little bit of video, but I remind myself, girl, podcasting is audio. Like if people want video, too damn bad. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, and like, um, that's what, that's something that attracted me as like a more introverted type of person. I was like, wait, you're telling me I could technically be like laying in my bed, wearing whatever, mm-hmm. talk, exactly. like, re- like work it. Like, all yes, right. exactly. We got, we got, got bed office. <laughs> we got bed office. Like I have something to say. This is totally my lane, like on the yes. real, everything else is like experimenting or like expanding right. from that. Cause it feels like the most, like the leap for myself and maybe yourself as well. Like the least resistance to just like getting yes. the message out there and then trusting Absolutely. that that will have the best effect, you know? Yeah. And that was one of my biggest things. I was like, what platform can I choose that will, you know, have the least amount of resistance and that will allow me to be consistent, to show up Mm -hmm. consistently. Mm -hmm. And so podcasting was one of those. Like I just felt that resistance with writing a newsletter every other day, you know, Mm -hmm. or some days I would just skip it and not even do it. I'm like, I don't even feel like it. So yeah. Yeah. (laughs) podcasting. I feel the same with not relating with writing a weekly newsletter it was just not the vibe yeah. I wanted like my clients or like audience to feel it I didn't like back to like how do you want to feel it was like yes. so not in alignment on like an authentic level but I'm curious like do you do you still engage with your um email listserv like do you oh, still, yes, yes, yes. like you're like hey here's the latest podcast episode or like yes. how, how do you utilize that space if like weekly newsletter is not the thing So I do have, that is part of my weekly newsletter um, is sharing the podcast episode through email. Um, But I more so wanted the email list to be either that. So that would be the weekly thing is sharing the podcast episode. Mm -hmm. And then every now and then I'll do, you know, just some type of message that I want to share. I'll type Mm -hmm. up and send it out. But I didn't want to feel um, like restricted that, you know, I had to write every single week some type of inspiring content or something. Yeah. Because ultimately the bulk of my content is through this podcast. Mm -hmm. Um, So I still have an email list. I do like to throw in the occasional, you know, email that's not related to podcasting. But again, I remind myself that podcasting is your is your main platform. So, you know, use that. Yeah. Um, And I think a lot of people have to know that, of course you're not going to be limited to just podcasting. Like you will have to get on video at some point. You mm-hmm. will have to write a newsletter, you know, at some point. Yeah. But not letting it, you know, overwhelm you or be the main form is, you know, what I try to remember in that. Yeah, that makes total sense. And like, do you find yourself podcasting from bizarre places because it yes. is just the audio <laughs> that is required? Or do you find yourself in a more like, in this world of such alternative ways of everything do you find yourself in a more traditional space like you seem to be in your office with uh-huh. the mic I'm like oh like I'm <laughs> laying in the bed sometimes oh shit it's so funny Bulls. because I, I travel from like my home to my parents home which is two hours away in South Carolina mm-hmm. and so whenever I'm up there for a week or two weeks like I have to pack up all this stuff and take it with me and so wherever I am I just kind of figure it out whether it's in the bedroom or um last week or week before last it was in the dining room at my sister's house and so you know on this side of the camera it looks all pretty but on the other (laughs) side of the camera there's boxes stacked up to the ceiling and I got the (laughs) door closed there's echoes so I'm like trying to you know maneuver stuff around so yeah you know I remind myself that's kind of why I got into this business or this space because we can be remote like we can podcast from anywhere you know I like having my own space but if I'm going to be traveling or doing something else, like it's okay, you can find a place or space to still mm-hmm. do it. So, yeah. Definitely. And like, have you met kind of like resistance or sh- for, for myself, I love and I feel super empowered knowing I can take my work and my message anywhere. At the yes. same time, I've observed this like, oh, are people looking at me? Like, are people yes. overhearing me? And I'm like wondering how much you can relate to that sense not to say we don't bust through it but this sense of like yeah yeah yeah. that comes up every time yeah yeah yeah. (laughs) but then I go you know once I get going and get started I just have to remind myself like okay just get into the flow just start and then you'll kind of just Mm -hmm. you know forget all of that but Mm -hmm. you know absolutely especially being around like my friends family roommates that was the first thing was like okay they're gonna hear me yeah, like yeah. I'm talking especially on some spiritual shit you need to know I'm, I'm like yeah like, <laughs> what are you talking about 
<laughs> and then I just have to bring that ego back and be like, you know what? This is my message. This yeah. is what I'm doing. Like you're putting it out to the masses, which is crazy. I don't care if everybody else hears it. But yeah. then it's like people walking by, people close to you. You know, it's so uh -huh. it's a little more intimate. And I'm like, okay, they're yeah. gonna ask me about this later. And I don't want to talk about it now. Mm -hmm. so yeah that definitely comes up you know yeah all, the time. all right that's reassuring because it definitely comes up for me I don't let it stop me but I'm like I'm right it's like all right I see you I see you there. yes yes, um, yes it's gonna come up yeah and um I'm also curious about your if you have one like a, a ritual for like your mm -hmm. weekly podcast it's like you do it on a certain time and day or you like yeah just on ritual of this content you open I tried that. that yeah <laughs> that doesn't seem to work for me I tried okay that. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah so I don't have like it's not a specific set I do have like a general um routine that I go through so as far as like so releasing episodes I always release episodes on a Tuesday okay. um I'm still playing around with that I may change the date a lot of podcasters release on Tuesday mm -hmm. um my coaches they release theirs on Monday which I love because when I was you know in the working space <laughs> nine to five I liked Monday morning listening to that podcast going to work mm -hmm. um so I'm still playing around with that but right now it's every Tuesday you know I have a podcast I usually try to upload and get everything typed up and ready on Sunday or Sunday night Mm -hmm. um, it really just depends on what I have going on that weekend. There's been times where I've like gotten up on Monday morning or Tuesday morning and put everything together and, you know, hit submit, um, which isn't always good to do because then I feel rushed. Um, but I try to usually have everything ready by Sunday night or, mm -hmm. you know, that way I have a day or two to look back at it. Mm -hmm. um, but usually I try to do things, you know, right when I'm thinking about it. So for yeah. instance, if I have an interview like I have here with you, um, if I'm interviewing a guest, I usually will have certain things set like their welcome email, you know, what their link is. It's kind of already pre-typed out and scheduled. Gotcha. Um, after they schedule the interview with me, they get a thank you email. Um, usually right after the podcast, I'll go make the cover art, you know, and just have that That's same. Cool. So that those things are done, the things that I can do immediately. Exactly. Um, and then as far as editing the actual episode, because I do all that myself as well, I usually try to let the message sit for a couple of days. You know, I don't usually record and edit in the same day. That's just too much. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so a few days later, I like to go back and re-listen to it and start editing yeah. with a fresh mind um, and just kind of get everything set for the next week. So I don't have like a set day. I've tried that. I'm like, okay, I'm going to edit on Wednesday. I'm going to make a cover out on Thursday. And it just never works that way. So I just have a list of things and it's like, okay, you know, you have to get this done by mm -hmm. Sunday night. So, you know, let's just kind of flow and make sure it all gets done. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of uh, what has worked for me. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. I also have tried the thing of like, you need to do this on this day, this on this day, this on yeah. this day this on this day and then I just like rage against yeah. the structure I set that I want to rebel myself. and just don't no, do totally <laughs> totally 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 that's why it's like all right make sure you get at least this one consistent thing done you exactly. know what I mean like playing with it it's still this concept of structure and consistency and like yes. uh consistently showing up because that's important but still Absolutely. not so many tedious things and then when to do the things where it does take the like flow or the sheer like yeah. this is spirit channeling uh away Absolutely. from it or like dim that in some type of way and that's not to say that will work for everyone it's really about right. like what what makes you back to feeling like what makes you feel like the juiciest in this because then that's going to like come across yeah. And sometimes, you know, that I'll get up at like four o'clock in the morning because I can't sleep anymore or I have all these ideas and I'm like, yeah. okay, well now I'm going to record this because I have to say this right now, okay, you know, cool. or I'll write it down somewhere and then go back to bed or whatever it is, you know, whatever I feel in that moment, as long as it's within a certain timeline, that's yeah. more so the control. Um, one of my coaches there uh analogy is like mm -hmm. we're in the feminine so we like to flow mm -hmm. he's like if you're a person that likes to just kind of go with the flow you're in your feminine he's like but mm -hmm. where the masculine comes in is the structure or mm -hmm. as they say like the riverbank so the masculine is the riverbank like this is your timeline but then you can flow however you want within that timeline we're just making sure that the river stays you know in those banks and i was like okay i like that yep. analogy mm -hmm. so for me my masculine or the structure i have is this is your timeline these are all things you have to do. You just kind of figure out how you want to do them within this timeline. Um, totally. So that's kind of what's what's worked. 
That makes sense. Yeah. And um, is your timeline, do you find it like a weekly thing or it's more like yeah. by project or like bigger event? Yeah, it's more of a weekly thing. Um, mm-hmm. Now, as far as like doing podcast interviews, mm-hmm. I have these spurts of like energy of like, okay, I need a bunch of guests. And so I'll have like an interview like every day or two interviews a day for a good month and a half or so or a good six weeks. Mm-hmm. And then after that, you know, I'll take a break. So gotcha. right now I'm kind of like on a break because yeah, the last few weeks it was like back to back to back because I was just in that flow of taking podcast interviews. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that also helps me batch content. You know, like I have everything scheduled out right now until June. So nice. that gives me a little bit of relief. Like, okay, well, if I don't want to get on a podcast, I don't have to because I have, you know, a buffer or space mm-hmm. um, to kind of hold me over. So I've learned that I, that kind of works for me that when I have mm-hmm. that burst of energy that I need to take advantage of it. So whether yeah. it's you know, writing up newsletters or taking a bunch of interviews, yeah. Um, to have the content then I can go back later and just kind of flow with it totally yeah mm-hmm. and like do you find that the messages or like what you're wanting to talk about comes through like organically yes. like you're saying sometimes in the middle of the night or like how back to like the form and uh flow like how much uh-huh. is it like this is the form, this is the da 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 versus like, oh my gosh, this is what I want to say right now. Oh, 90% of the time, it's like the download just came, the message, right. you know, or something popped up in my personal life and I'm like, I got to talk about this. Yeah. Most of the time, that's what it is. And it comes in spurts. Sometimes I'll have them back to back and I'm like, okay, this is like three episodes. <laughs> and I'm going to yeah. sit here and record all of them because I have something to say. Yeah. And then other times it'll just be like, cricket, cricket. <laughs> Um, so that's why I've learned that like when the inspiration comes to yeah. take advantage of it, mm-hmm. because then you're going to have that downtime, you know, and that's, that's ultimately how life is, you know, life is a flow. It's, it's up yes, and down. Yes, like, yes. You're going to have that up where you're just all the way up and things are just coming to you. And then you're going to yeah. have that down resting period. Um, mm-hmm. so I've learned that like, that's kind of my flow, but 90% of the time it's literally just like inspiration or download or pop mm-hmm. up. Yeah. Um, and the crazy thing is like some of my podcast guests that have reached out to me, like the last recent ones that I did, the message like all kind of aligned with each other. And mm. I had no clue that it was going to work like that. Like wow. we talked about loving relationships. We talked about purpose and yes. how that led into other relationships. You know, like the last three people I interviewed, those messages all came at the same time and they were interrelated. And I'm like, I had no clue. I didn't plan it out like this. It looked like I had planned it out like that. Yeah. Um, so, you know, when divine inspiration comes or when spirit's giving you things, it's coming for a reason and they have mm-hmm. it written out for you. You just need to go with it. Yeah. Yeah. That, that is so cool and inspiring to hear. And is it of that same energy that you um, get guests on your show as in it's like rather spontaneous and then aligned instead of you like yes. intentionally like this is this person, this is this person. Yes. Yes. So I have, I don't know how familiar you are with human design. Um, not not that familiar, but it, it okay. is coming up more and more as of recently. Okay. So that has really, really helped me um, within the last few years mm. as far as like my spiritual purpose and how my energy works. Yeah. Um, so there's uh, a few different types of profiles. Okay. Um, anybody can figure out their profile. You can Google human design calculator or generator. Um, so you have to know your date of birth and your birth time, like the mm-hmm. exact time. And so you type all this in, it'll tell you like what your profile is. So mm-hmm. mine is a manifesting generator, or we just call it MG for short. Mm-hmm. So really what all this means is it's how you attract things, how you collect energy and how you kind of function in the world. So one of the things that I struggle with, which now I know as a manifesting generator, is that we have to wait for things to come to us to respond mm. to okay. versus us like initiating. We're not initiators. And I'm mm. like, no wonder nothing works for me because I'm over here damn trying to initiate and none of the shit's working. <laughs> you know, so like pitching and initiating <laughs> and just throwing things out there to see what works, you know, yeah. I'm like, just like, no, that doesn't work for you. You're an MG. Like, you can initiate after you've responded. So something has to come to you. Like, what does it feel? Does that feel good to you? Yeah. Okay, if it is, you kind of try it out. Okay, now you can initiate and, you know, full steam ahead. Yeah. But you have to wait to respond to something first. So then I was like, well, do I just sit around waiting for shit to happen? Like, like, okay. 
you know? And I, try to, I try to remember that when I want to like just start doing things and start initiating, it's like, okay, I'm one of those persons where I have to kind of play with the idea first mm -hmm. and I have to ask spirit like, okay, spirit, if this is a line, give me a sign, give me something. And then when I get it, if I get the okay, then I can be full steam ahead. Yeah. But it's like, I have all these energy and all these ideas, but I have to wait until I get that confirmation in order to move forward. Mm -hmm. um, so just learning that about myself, you know, as a manifesting generator, that that's how we work. Like this mm -hmm. is why certain things in your life don't work the way you think they should because you're going yeah. against your natural rhythm. Um, so I invite everybody to do that, to find out what your profile is so that you can mm -hmm. know, you know, what your rhythm and your flow is in this world. So mm -hmm. that's tremendously. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Thank you for sharing. And yeah, seeing like these things that <clears throat> we might come across and being like, this might not work for me as a unique energetic being back to the like what works for my unique energy I think it's cool that you found human design as like a blueprint and way of understanding better ways to align with uh, the external world with the unique energy of your internal world yes yes mm -hmm. I love it so it, it has helped tremendously so back to like guests um have I pitched guests here and there yeah but usually they just kind of you know come to me mm -hmm. um more so like what what is my inspired action so mm -hmm. for instance you know joining a podcasting network or mm -hmm. you know getting on someone's list to say hey I'm looking for guests and then people will just kind of pour in and you know then I can kind of sift through and see yes or no this person works this person doesn't work versus okay. me just kind of initiating and putting it all out there you know yeah. for each person so mm -hmm. that's what kind of worked for me um the other thing with manifesting generators is we more so respond to like yes and no so mm -hmm. ask me a question and I can tell you mm -hmm. versus me trying to come up with the content or the material or the question that's uh, you know one way we respond so for me getting a list of people who are pitching to me then I mm -hmm. get the option to say yes or no so now I'm in my energy um, okay. so those are ways that I've had to learn that okay I need to be asked yes or no questions or you know the material needs to be presented to me gotcha um, so so when I reached out to you being like hey would you come on yes. and interview like <laughs> that completely worked with perfect your, right in my uh, energy yep yeah yep. you know because like and if mind, it wasn't it would have been like a mm, I don't know yeah <laughs> Oh yeah, when it you, was an energetic when you, match. When you booked, I was like, yeah. <laughs> like, He's like, she's serious, okay. <laughs> yeah, now I'm curious if I'm one of those like initiator archetypes because I know I yeah. noticed that's how I've been dancing with my business the past uh -huh. few like days and weeks. And like maybe I'm not technically, but it's the style I've been utilizing mm -hmm. and maybe it will burn out you know or maybe right. it can keep going I'm super curious to go deeper with that lens yeah. now you might be a manifester so manifestors mm -hmm. are that they can initiate gotcha you know all that stuff and it just happens for them you know so yeah. we have this conversation in my community all the time like well you're a manifester you get to initiate yeah well you're an mg you get to respond <laughs> so we all have these things that we don't like about it and we think is our struggle yeah. And so, you know, just being able to talk with other people of different profiles to see like we all play a specific role, but, you mm -hmm. know, don't think that one is better than the other because they each have their, you know, their struggles and issues and things they have to deal with. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Thinking of it as like we're all in our own uniqueness, like know yourself, know your strengths yes. and weaknesses, but then on like an Avengers level or like a Power Rangers level yeah. and we all come together, together exactly. working together with our uniqueness and like our puzzle pieces and become greater than ourselves and I think that's for myself that's so cool to remember like yes. yo you don't have to be perfect or master everything build a team that anything can get done between and all you of got you. all the puzzle pieces together exactly it's like all right <laughs> it's yep. like what, what's Let's my niche again what's my niche again <laughs> that's where yes. i'll be yeah um so what what where is your community is it like in a facebook group or like um, on ma ma list? majority i would say most of my community is on instagram i'm okay. finding now that a lot of it is starting to spring up on facebook which is weird because okay. i'm not huge on facebook myself like mm -hmm. I'm huge on Instagram like that's my space I love it 
Yeah. Um, and then I just recently got on TikTok, which I'm still like, ooh, <laughs> I'm resistant to it. Um, but my podcast coach is like, girl, I promise you, like, if you get on there and start putting your content on there, like, this is one of the fastest growing mm. platforms, you know, to grow your audience. Yeah. And so it's true. I put a video on there and it got 600 views and I was like, oh, hey. shit. <laughs> you know? Um, so I'm, I'm still a little resistant to TikTok, but Instagram is my jam. And yeah. then Facebook is just really starting to open up. I have no clue why, <laughs> but um, yeah, a lot of my people seem to be, to be on Facebook. So that's mm -hmm. kind of where, where it's going now. And apparently TikTok, so we'll see how that goes. Yeah, thank you for sharing. And um, I want to be mindful of the time. We are at about an hour and oh, I'm just, fine. I'm very much enjoying this conversation. But yes, I figure, like. Too. If you, if you have some more time, I'll keep going with some, some more questions before wrapping up. Yeah. Sure. All right. Well, yeah, I'm, curi <laughs> I'm curious how Instagram came to be uh, what you most resonate with. You know, I think, uh, so when Facebook kind of started to become real spammy yeah. or it started to become a space of People there's a fighting, lot of negative and bickering yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the fighting and the bickering you know someone posting something and then that turns into a whole negative conversation you know yeah. things like that I think that's where I just more so gravitated toward Instagram because it doesn't mm. have all that um and then also because I am like a visual person so seeing mm -hmm. those pictures it just kind of in, inspires me and motivates me from just you know seeing a picture mm -hmm. whereas like you, like I said Facebook it was yeah it started to become really negative you know people posting videos of this and talking about that and the news popping up and um I just felt like I could really get my message out without all the noise on yeah. Instagram and then the visuals you know it was just <laughs> like I'm inspired by pictures so yeah uh, that's my space very cool. And like, I'm sure if it's anything like your podcasting flow, your flow with Instagram isn't this yes. like stringent, like you must post at this time on these days, yeah. but it's more like organic as it's coming through you. Absolutely. And I have been working on that because I, I fought with that for a long time. Like, mm -hmm. you know, do I need to post at the same time every day? And, you know, and then mm -hmm. I, I found that that was more of, that was a mindset block for me you know other people that I were following I noticed that okay these people have this many followers it may not be 10k plus followers but yeah. they're successful you know their businesses are growing they have plenty of money um they don't post every day hmm how are they making it and they're not posting every day you know yeah. so I started to realize like this is just like it doesn't fit into a box and it's okay to go with the flow and still feel and be abundant you know we don't have yeah. to always follow the quote-unquote rules to be quote unquote successful. Um, so yeah, it's really when I'm in flow um, and I've gotten better with that as kind of like scheduling posts or okay. when I get the downloads, then I'll, I may get up, like I said, in the middle of the night and type it up. Yeah. And there may be like three okay. different messages that I have. Yeah. And so I'll save those and then I can post them you know, at a later date. So mm -hmm. again, like for me, the content is always like a huge download. I have to kind yeah. of sift through it. And then there's a resting period where I may not have anything. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm okay with that. It works. Yeah. And I love the perspective that you're mirroring the sense of all the work doesn't have to be like written, edited and uploaded right now. It can yes. come like in the middle, it, like it can be you can start working on the content before you even interview the person. And then after right. the interview, the editing, like seeing it um, almost like not on this linear timeline, you know, yes. because like the different parts of the work will get done. And then, yes, it will come together holistically yes. when it's meant to go out. And yeah, I find, I feel such um, excitement in that, yes. you know? Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yes, I love it so much. And just something that I'm curious about, we've been talking a lot about content creation and that whole process and the different platforms. I wanna shift very quickly to the topic of money, just wondering like how your journey has been, like we said, we will mm -hmm. get we will get compensated beyond money or what we can conceive of in the work that we're doing. But in for the yes. sake of the box of money and it being a business, like how has your journey been with that specifically, like owning, like this is what it costs to work with me. And then how much have you expanded that and like raised the prices with more experience or whatever? 
Yeah, so I will start by saying that, you know, it started with me working on my own wealth mm-hmm. consciousness. Like mm-hmm. I had no idea what wealth consciousness was, you know, what true abundance was. Um, you know, working with my first coach, she kind of introduced me to that. And that's when I learned that, you know, having a lack mindset versus having a, an abundant mindset, like how that works. Mm-hmm. Um, I had to do a lot of, I'm still always doing that personal work with um, wealth consciousness in itself. Um, but on the business side, even still, um, it's been a work in progress. Mm-hmm. I've learned that for me, if I focus on the monetary aspect of it, then mm-hmm. things just kind of fall flat. You know, okay, it's okay. always work. That I don't know why. And sometimes I get mad. I'm like, spirit, is this how it's really <laughs> supposed to work for me? <laughs> Whenever I focus on a number or the money aspect, it's like things fall flat. Mm-hmm. Um, but when I focus on the work itself or the mm-hmm. thing that I want to invite into my life, it just like magically happens or appears. Um, so I've had issues with that, like with working with coaches, you know, they say, well, how much do you want to make this month or yeah. this year, you know? And so whenever I put a number on it, it just doesn't work. Um, it's more of like, I have to have a detached sense about it. You know, if yeah. I put a number on it, then I just kind of have to detach from it and just let it be. And then whatever comes, comes, whatever happens, happens. Um, so that's where I have kind of, that's kind of how I've run my business and it's mm-hmm. worked for me. Um, just kind of setting that price. And then more so when it comes to setting prices, you know, I try to go with what the market standard is, you know, not too high, not too low. Like what's the average that people are charging for, you know, a program like this? Like for Mm -hmm. instance, my podcasting one-on-one is Mm $9.97, which it seems like a lot, but then again, it's not. And so when I start thinking about the amount of work we're going to be doing, like you're getting a huge benefit from less than a thousand dollars, you know? So it's really not that much um so really just trying to feel into it Mm -hmm. um and for me that means feeling validated for the amount of work I'm doing yeah and and again that comes with self-worth and confidence and doing that inner work like does this number feel good to you Mm -hmm. how much you know work are you actually putting out and so sometimes that comes with me, like actually writing out the details of all the work we're going to do. We're going to work on this. We're going to do your podcast cover. We're going to talk about RSS feeds. And, you know, once I make a list of all this stuff and it's physically in my face, I'm like, holy shit, this is a lot of stuff. Like, That's so true. Yeah, I, I, maybe I need to charge more for this. Right. You know? And then that'll start to come up. For yeah. Me. Yeah. Looking at just the number, which doesn't resonate as much compared right. to like, this is the work. Yes. This is the growth. This is what I we're going to feel. Down. Yes, Mm -hmm. like that. Give me that itemized receipt (laughs) on on the energies. I'm like, I'm a very logical, scientific person. So Mm -hmm. it's like, it needs to make sense to me. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's always been like that in my life. Everything, I need to know the why behind it or the what, you know? Uh, And so when I can see it, I'm like, oh, okay, that makes sense. (laughs) Yeah, I want to know the what and the why and like not feel ashamed that that's like a genuine, like coming from almost that inner child space of genuine curiosity. Like, how does this work? How does that work? What's going on? Yeah, so that's how I've been able to either raise my prices or lower Mm -hmm. them, you know, uh, if I can itemize like the amount of work that I'm going to be doing. Yeah. And I think about the amount of energy it takes. I'm like, okay, you know what? I need to charge more for this because this is taking a lot of my energy and a lot of my time, you Mm -hmm. know, versus something that doesn't. I'm like, well, it's not that serious. I can lower the price or, you know, do something else with that. This is true. Yes. All right. So before before signing off and letting people know where they can find you, I'm curious, like, what would you tell a young light worker or intuitive that is think like at the point in the journey that we've both been through of this, it like stuff is falling apart, but I've not quite built up this yeah. new thing yet, like talking to that place. Um, you know, coming from where, you know, I went through personally, I would say start by picking up some books mm. or listening to a podcast. You can listen to my podcast. Yeah. Um, you know, really taking that first step is the biggest thing. Like you have to take responsibility um, and kind of put yourself out there to figure out, okay, well, what, what can I do now? How can I work on myself? Mm-hmm. How do I need to fix this? Um you know, kind of being out of myself and my story of why things are happening to me the way they are. 
um, you know, kind of shifting your mindset, well, what can I do about it? You know, I may mm-hmm. not know all the ways to work it out. Um, you know, for me, it was p- picking up, you know, a Sylvia Brown book, just mm-hmm. that picking that up and starting to read that opened the door for so many other things. So what's that one thing that may open the door for you? Or what's that small step you can take? You know, is it watching a YouTube video of someone that inspires you or picking up a book or listening to a podcast? So taking that first step is like the biggest uh, lesson that I would want people to know and to learn mm-hmm. if they're on this new path, you know, as a light worker. And then things will just kind of open up for you from there. If you, you know, they always say the teacher will appear when the student's ready and that's exactly what happens. So when you're ready and you take that first step, things will start to just open up and happen for you. Yes, very yes. cool. Thank you so much for sharing. And then, yeah, like what, what are you working on right now? Where can people find you and get plugged in? Yeah, so my podcast, which is Spiritual Shit You Need to Know, you can find it on Apple, Spotify, Pandora. Uh, my favorite is, you know, Alexa, play Spiritual Shit You Need to Know podcast. You can say that. It'll start playing yes. for you if you have a Google. Uh-huh. Yeah. I love cool. it. Uh-huh. I, I did that one day and I was like, oh my God, I can do your work. So exciting. Um, so you can listen to the podcast. Um, follow me on Instagram. It's my name at Regis Cowan. Um, mm-hmm. I'm on Facebook, same thing as Regis Cowan. So those are my main platforms. Again, I said I'm on TikTok, mm-hmm. still working through that. But if you want to follow me there, it's the same thing. It's my name at Regis Cowan. So yeah, check me out. And then as far as things I'm working on right now, if you you know are going through your own spiritual life crisis or wanting to find your purpose, um, you can go to my website, which is theholisticsforjourner.com and you know, click on work with me one-on-one. So my program is that I have now is obviously that one, finding your spiritual life purpose. Mm-hmm. Um, and then my other program is, you know, if you have a message or you want to start a podcast or if you're a coach, then you, uh, you know, bring that as your new space or your new platform. Um, mm-hmm. Then you can work with me one-on-one there and learn about how to podcast. So those yes. are my two things I have now. And yeah, I'm super excited and glad that I could be here with you today in this space. Yes. And yeah, you know, we could converse and share our knowledge. It's, it's been fun. I love it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't even know you had the um like podcasting, like helping people podcast oh, yeah. container. I was like, oh, cool. I, yeah, I just go started over that. that. <laughs> yeah. Again, something that just kind of dropped into my lap. I was like, okay, we'll start yes. asking me about it. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Well, awesome. It has been a pleasure chatting with you. Thank you so much for sharing Enjoyed a bit it. about your journey and where you've been and where you want to go. I hope you have like a lovely rest of your day and rest Thank of your you week. Thank you so much. Yes. Glad we could connect. And yes. yeah, don't be a stranger. I'm always on Instagram. So that's my number one place to connect. So yeah, hopefully yeah. we can you know do something again and maybe I can have you on the podcast. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, um, I'll manifest it. I'll be like this. Yes. Give me this. Give me this. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Thanks again so much. Take care. You're welcome. Bye. Yeah, bye.